This is Spencer with The MacGuffin, and today I'm joined by Nick Frost, Hello. who we last had on for The World's End. Um, this time you are taking center stage, so to speak, sure. in Cuban Fury, a story about a man who rediscovers his love for um, salsa. Um, life. Life, too. Yes, life as well, after, you know, meeting a girl. You know, yeah. Come, comes back, brings back those, uh, those memories. Yeah. Um, first thing I want to start with is, obviously... I was hearing you, you spent seven months training yeah. for the dancing in this movie. What an idiot. Yeah. Uh, what, what, what exactly, yeah. What exactly uh, was the decision, I mean, since you were one of the people creating the story, that yeah. you're like, you know what? I want to do a movie about dance that's going to take me seven months to get ready for. <laughs> um, what, what was sort of the inspiration behind that and the experience like getting ready for it? Um, I think I wanted... I wanted to be like the Daniel Day Lewis of the romantic comedy world in terms of putting yeah. the effort yeah. in and yeah, okay. uh, <laughs> living salsa. And it wasn't just the training, it was only listening to salsa music, going to clubs, salsa clubs all the time. And, and just, you know, because what this film isn't is it isn't a parody of salsa music. It's not, you yeah. know, uh, yeah. it's not Blades of Glory in terms of. Or uh, Balls of Fury. It's a kind of fun parody on those. Those things might not even be there, you know. It could be anything, in fact. But you know, this is a kind of love letter to to Latino culture in a way. Um, in terms of the, I think literally within forty minutes of the first day's training, <laughs> I thought, "Ah, you idiot! You <laughs> this idiot! This was a mistake. <laughs> what a terrible mistake!" Because <laughs> I trained in a place called Pineapple Dance Studios in London, which is really big, old, famous dance studios. And, uh, you know, it's a kind of odd feeling when you go to work every morning, you squeeze down a little set of stairs, and on one side are like 20 18 year old ballerinas warming up, and like the Charmin bears <laughs> coming down the steps, you know. And you have that weird feeling, you think, I probably weigh as much as all of you put together. Uh, and then you're in this tiny mirrored box, you know. Yeah. Just trying to learn how to dance. And you can't escape. You can't not look at yourself, you know. And the people they got to teach me were so amazing that you kind of look at them do it and you think, I'm never, ever going to look like that, you know. <laughs> and it's a long time, seven months. You know, oh, no, it's, kind it's, of a week in, you thought, if you were in prison for seven months, it would seem like it was forever. That's, that's like more hardcore than most people have to train for like a Transformers movie. Like, yeah. I mean, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I think... You know, if you if you look at dancing on the star, dancing with the stars, you know what do you is that what it's called here? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you know those guys, the ones that get really good, they probably only have a week to learn. Oh yeah, and they're doing like ten hours a day, twelve yeah. hours a day, whatever yeah. it is. Yeah, but they ha they have like a week to learn a choreography essentially. Right. So if you get to a point where you can be taught choreography, mm -hmm. then I could have probably done that in a month. You know, but the whole point was that they t they. I was like a, Marine, a U.S. Marine in as much as they deconstructed me <laughs> and built, and you back built up. me back up oh, in the yeah, shape yeah. of fiery Latino rhythm. So, I mean, what was the decision to make it be about? Were you a, a salsa fan before this, or were you just no. like random musical I genre? I hated that, salsa. Is that the, like just the most difficult possible? No, that one. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, I think Hip Hop Fury would have been. Yeah, you know, there's always room for a sequel. <laughs> yeah, I think someone's already mentioned Twerk or Twerk Fury. Uh, or yeah, don't go there. Yeah, uh, That's, that needs to end. I think it needed to be, you know, a dance where you hold a woman. Oh, you know, that's true. That's, There's a romantic element to it, yeah. What it needed to be, and it needed to be um, romantic and fiery. And I used to work at a Mexican restaurant called Chiquitos. I worked there for years, and I kind of loved it, actually. But what I didn't love is the fact that head office would send us down music every month. Uh, and that was the only music we could play. And it wasn't Mexican music. It was salsa music, <laughs> which annoyed me because it's like... It's not the same culture. Mexico uh, isn't uh, Cuba, you know. Uh, uh, so I think, you know, it's fine on a busy Saturday night when your section is full and there are 12 waiters on and loads of people and you can't really hear the music. But when it's a Monday, Tuesday day shift and it's what, it's 2 o'clock <laughs> and everyone's now gone because the lunch rush is over and it's you and one chef and you know you've got four hours until the next customer comes in 
and the next waiter comes in to relieve you and you're stood there spinning trays and all you can hear is bing, ding, 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 <laughs> bing, 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 bing. it, it kind of got to me. I, yeah, I always wonder about like when you go into Starbucks and they have like the music playing in the background. Oh, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. like day after day after day when you've heard the song like 57 times. Just yeah. like how, how you don't go insane yeah. during those circumstances. Well, it's just in the Gypsy Kings down too. And I kind of like the Gypsy Kings, but the fact that they're Spanish, who li- they're Spanish artists who live in France. Uh, <laughs> they're not Mexican. It's yeah. not salsa music, not you know. All, yeah. But it's also like... Even if you like something, after like the 57th time, you're like, all right, I get it. Bah, yeah. bah, 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 bah. You know? yeah. And you knew the next intro to the next song yeah, that was yeah. coming up. It's too much. It's too much. Um, why did you decide to write it about, um, you know, dance and dance culture and life and all that sort of stuff? And also, why did you decide to make it, you know, an earnest approach? To it? I mean, we talked about, you know, Balls of Fury, Blades of Glory, all these yeah. ones that sort of take a genre of something and make fun of it for comedy. But one yeah. of the things I liked most about this movie is that you honored it and sort of, you know, made comedy within it at the same time. How, why did you decide to make it that way? Well, I think, you know, the school of... I'm going to say filmmaking. The school of filmmaking that Edgar and I and Simon kind of adhere to is that the comedy can be funny and the drama has to be dramatic and the horror in, in the terms of Shaun of the Dead mm-hmm. has to be horrific or the action needs to be really action packed. Awesome, yeah. And the, you know, the same with this, the dancing needed to be real and fantastic and beautiful and, and passionate. And, you know, we're kind of keen purveyors of the fact that comedy and drama can exist in the same universe at the same time. Mm-hmm. And it's often better, you know, if you, if you can build a believable character, i.e. a 38 year old, man whose life is in a rut and you know is going nowhere and you paint a picture of this man then people kind of go with you on that journey you know and it it means that you can at points take your foot off the 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 comedy pedal and and just allow the drama to play out slightly you know and i think people really kind of respond to that it's just that you know I, i love um Baz Luhrmann's Strictly Ballroom. And mm. that was a touchstone for this. You know, the drama is dramatic. It's funny. It's tender. It's passionate. Uh, and it's, it, you know, it, it, those things work nicely together. It's, it, I mean, it's funny when you're talking about, you know, you and Edgar and Simon sort of school of thought. And one of the things that I actually like most about your work together <clears throat> is when it's almost when it's not comedic. Like yeah. when your serious backstory in The World's End was one of <laughs> my favorite parts of that movie. It was like, this is clearly not funny but yeah. like it was so it was so such a nice balance to um the comedy that it really it really made it that much more meaningful well it's a it's a per- and andy knightley is a person who could exist outside of that film yeah totally. he, he, he could be, be next movie, door yeah. right now you know yeah. and, and the same you know same with simon's character we got so many tweets and people coming up to us saying i'm gary i'm gary <laughs> king or i know gary king you know <laughs> and that's that's the same with all of those characters in all of those films yes they're kind of ridiculous in terms of the fact that Ed and Sean are fighting zombies in a pub. Right. But if they weren't fighting zombies, if they were in that pub, they're real people. Yeah, you, know? you could see those two guys hanging Absolutely out. Absolutely, you could, yeah. You know. Um, you know, one of the things that's interesting uh, about this was obviously, you know, Simon's not there. you got Chris O'Dowd yeah. coming in to be opposite you. And I love Simon, but I also love Chris O'Dowd quite yeah. a bit. And so what was it like working opposite him? And i got to say, the uh, rooftop dance-off was one of the funniest things I've seen in a long time. Oh, good, what was you. it like doing that? Because that seems like that must have been a beast to film. Yeah, it was five days. <laughs> the only time I got injured was doing that, <laughs> doing some of the wire work for that. I got injured lifting Chris over my head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but it was, it was the, it was. We we're on top of a car park, which is essentially a, a, a kind of asphalt yeah, so, yeah. heat exchange system, and it was the. It was one of those weeks in London where it was 95 degrees Fahrenheit for the whole week. So they had to set up kind of tents with three aircon units in. Holy and cow. So we were kind of limited of to how, many, how, much, how many takes we could do. But it was... Any time we did dancing in this film, it wasn't fun to shoot. You know, it was fun to hang out with Chris and just to have a laugh. The scenes where we're in the office or in a car or bowling, right. they're fun because yeah. you just do your lines and you have a laugh and, you know, but whenever we danced in this film, all we did was dance. When we weren't rolling, we were off to the side practicing, you know. See this, the dance fight we did in bits, 
so it was kind of easy. So we did like a 30 second chunk or a 10 second chunk. And because James Griffiths, the director, wanted to shoot it like the, 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 the knife fight in the Born Identity. So we wanted to kind of give it, give some it for the fellas, you know. Yeah. But the, you know, the actual, the dances, the actual beautiful salsa dances, a lot of those we shot, obviously you cut in and you shoot other bits, but a lot of those we shot top to bottom as one, you know. Interesting. Um, and then we'd do that six or seven times and then we'd go and get bits and different sections of it. I mean, it's interesting, you know, it's come, someone coming from a comedy background, I don't know how much, you know, improv versus like scripted work you've done throughout your career, but it seems like there's probably more um, leniency for that than the dancing. It feels like the dancing really had to be quite precise in this movie. Ye- ye- yes and no. The, da- the dancing was precise, but... It was only when we started to do the big dance scenes with me and Rashida and Olivia and mm. is that I started to realize at that point, ah, this is why you trained me for seven months. So, you know, with the best will in the world, you can set up an amazing scene. But when you, you know, when you edit clips together and you think uh, we're missing a bit here, you know, be, being able to actually dance enables you to get together with Richard Marcel and Susanna and Olivia or, or, or Rashida and we'll say, what can we do right now to fill this gap, you know? What, what are the sort of funny, weird things that I guess maybe only me, I would think about while watching the movie is um, when you get to the, like the competition at the end and you're dancing with your sister, who's played by Olivia Coleman. Um, why was she so good? Like after all that time off, uh, <laughs> you took months and months uh, yeah. to get back. I was like, wow, she really seemed to get right back in there pretty quick. <laughs> well, I think she... I think there's a line where he comes, she comes to the driving range, um, to get me, yeah, where yeah. it's like a tiny line where she says something like, she's been on cruise ships doing it. Uh, okay. So that's what she did. I see. When I turned my back on it, she, yeah, yeah. she pursued going, it and did yeah. cru- cruise ship work. But yeah, uh, <laughs> she's kind of, kind of good. Yeah. Well, I mean, what was it like for all of you? I mean, obviously you talked about you doing seven months. What was it like for, you know, Rashida and Chris and even her to just get ready for this movie? Because there's – all of you do some pretty intense yeah. stuff. I mean, Chris, yeah. not just um, not just the salsa, but just dancing in general. He does Yeah, he of. does. He's uh, – they all work really hard. I think Chris did about four or five weeks and Rashida did like eight weeks and Olivia did eight weeks as well and – um you know, I, I don't want to destroy any of the, any other movie magic, but there were certain bits, you know, when we did the whole thing back to front, there were certain shots that n- not necessarily weren't our lovely actors. Right. Uh, there may or may not have been. A- well, I, I was fortunate to have seven months free. Right. And as a producer, I, at the time, and I said, yeah, let's, let's, let's do this, you know. Uh, but those guys are very busy, successful actors. And, but to be fair, you know, like, like all of us, they came in at eight o'clock in the morning and we finished at th- three in the afternoon, you know. I mean, it feels like if you're getting into a film that's this deep into dance, you're probably pretty committed right away because this is not yeah. something you want to walk in just like somebody off the street to the dancing no. stuff like in the movie. That No, not at all. I mean, you know, me and Rashida worked so hard and it, I keep finding little bits of video that we'd shot and keep sending them off to her but I, I found this clip the other day of me and her doing a dance and there's a, like a, a section which is probably two seconds long where we both smile at one another and it's like it's probably the happiest I've ever seen myself mm. and that's because you know you have that you have that uh, relationship with a, a dance partner where you kind of know how you work mm-hmm. you know you know how the other one works and it's unsaid and it's unsexual and it's kind of a beautiful it's a beautiful thing do you know what i mean synergy or something like that. yeah absolutely i mean that's a kind of funny thing i learned kind of going to the clubs and stuff like that is it doesn't pay to be a pervert in salsa dancing (laughs) that's fact you think you go along (laughs) and you find a lady and you could afford to just grind up a bit slow but the girls talk about the boys, and if there's a perv, I don't know. No I, one feel, I feel like with Chris him. really does a good job of setting that tone of what. Oh like, yeah, a perv. But he was, gets shunned at the end yeah. because of it. You know. Did Did you at all during your preparation or after this movie's done, just like casually roll into like a salsa night or <laughs> club or something like that, and everyone's like, "Oh, he's not going to be able to do this," and just like, yeah, just like drop some moves on everyone. I finished. I just did a sick com uh, with Bob Whitey who did Curb Your Enthusiasm okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that comes out in May in the UK 
um, but we had our rap party at a venue next to a salsa venue. So when our rap party finished at 11, I said to everyone, hey, why don't we... There's a salsa club here. Why don't we go salsa dancing? And uh, yeah, it was it was great. I mean, I think I was probably three or four drinks over my optimum in terms of really getting. Still, yeah. You know, Still you start to level. think, ah, oh, sh- maybe I shouldn't do a double turn. You can see myself rolling off it down some stairs. Uh, you know, into a a way to carry in a big tray of champagne glasses. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it was. It was. It, I was kind of pretty good. That's awesome. I've always liked dancing. You know, I've always been good at dancing. But it's a very. You know, there's an odd vibe when a big man enjoys dancing and is good at it, where you kind of get kind of looked at by, mm. by other people watching. You know, as if they kind of feel sorry for you or they feel like you've. I I describe this quite a lot, but it's a look that you might give a child who's overcome a terrible childhood disease and has run a half marathon. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's that kind yeah. of, oh. It's like, oh, he overcame. Oh, look at him. Yeah, look at the big you, guy. You did so well. Look at him. Yeah, but you did so well. <laughs> oh, you did so well. Yeah. That's funny. He's not sweating. It probably means his kidneys have died. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, you know, I kind of hate that. What's it like, you know, going from, you know, the transition of being like a beloved supporting character to the guy who's really counted on to carry the movie? Because, I mean, yeah, you mean you have Chris and Rashida and other people in this movie, but really it is you who's got to tell the story of a man, you know, whose childhood had this profound impact on him, that he's finally rediscovering life, all this sort of stuff. Like, there's scenes, like, where it's just you getting, like, the mirrors together in your house and stuff like that. There are really these kind of touching little moments. What is it like to have all that sort of pressure lumped on you? Like, it's like Cuban Fury is on your back. uh, I... um Honestly, I never think about it. I just, uh, you have to trust the director. You have to trust your own instinct, trust the script and your cast and your own skill in terms of being able to act honestly and be funny. You know, I mean, I think if you were to think about every facet of what happens during a film and the release of it and right, whether or not sure. it's going to do box office and can I lead the, Can I lead this film? You know, I think you'd go mad. But I think you also, uh, I mean, especially in this instance, you're, there's there's a lot of elements that you're working with. I mean, you're involved in the writing, you're a producer. Like, was it like, were you involved in picking the director? What were you, were you involved in the casting? I mean, because, I mean, you're really trying to set... I don't know, the pieces yeah. in place that you really believe. Yeah. So you don't have to worry about it because you don't, I mean, if if you if somebody else is doing that, you might have to be concerned about that. Yeah, thing. I mean, I think, you know, I'm very fortunate that we have Naira. Thank you that we have Naira, you know, Naira Park, who's done everything we've done and she... She knows you well. She does it, you know, and, uh, you know, I wrote, we wrote a list of actresses we wanted and we knew we wanted Chris and Ian McShane. Uh Yes, you know, McShane. Deadwoods Ian McShane. Yeah. How many times do you say cocksucker on the uh, set? Yeah, quite a lot. He's, <laughs> yeah, he's kind of hardcore. He's amazing, really. Uh, you know, and, and we knew John Brown, who wrote it, and mm. we knew we wanted to work with John and James we'd met before, and we liked his stuff. And it was like, you know, we're in a position where we can say, yeah, this guy's nice, and let's handpick a little team and and uh, and, and and make a film, you know. That's awesome. Um Okay, now that we've talked about Cuban Fury, uh, it comes out April 4th? Uh, 11th. 11th, yeah. okay. Um, and the website. So soon on that thing. Yeah, Cuban Fury yeah. movie, cubanfury-movie.com for okay. the website. Um, what else do you have coming up that people should keep their eyes out for, and where can people keep tabs on what you're uh, Yeah, I have a sitcom coming out called Mr. Sloan. Uh, with the lovely Bob Whitey, who directed Kirby's Enthusiasm. But when will us poor Americans get to see it? Well, it comes out on Sky in May, so I think it, it might get it, over here later it on might, this year. It might reach other channels. It may there, never come it? over here, to be honest. Oh, no, I'm sure other uh, channels will acquire yeah. it one way or another. Uh, and I just, I'm doing a pilot for Fox with, with Justin oh, Long. Great. Wow, that sounds interesting. Uh, called Sober Companion, where I play a, a high-functioning um, <laughs> a lawyer and alcoholic. And uh, he's given to me by the county court of Chicago as my sober companion to keep me alive. That sounds intriguing. Yeah. uh, You know, I'm kind of thrilled that it was just offered and it's... uh, 
you know, there's a long way to go. It's a pilot sure. at this point, but it's a great script, and I like Justin, and, and we get on, and we find each other funny. and Totally. So, uh, and you're at twitter.com slash Nick J. Frost. Nick J. Frost, yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much, Thank Nick. you. Cheers. And wish you with, uh, best of luck with uh, Cuban Pre. Thank you. Check out more interviews at MacGuffin. That's MacGuff.in, and uh, we'll see you next time. Magneto can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Like, don't even try to bite the sun stars. Mr. Spock can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The Borg can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.